All right, new video this week. Spoiler alert, we're going to talk about Netrunners from Netflix. So we're going to replicate the Sandetistan effect in Grease Pencil. It's not a perfect effect, but I just wanted to, you know, doodle around, play around with what the possibilities can do inside Grease Pencil. Anyways, if you saw this, <laughs> you already know that the most important message of all is if you want to dream big, don't close your eyes. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one message you need to know. All right, so let's get started. And in here, Blender, in Blender, we're going to open Grease Pencil. We're going to set up our workspace. I'm going to be time lapsing this since this is the boring part. Well, I guess not many people like this part. I don't know why, because it's totally relaxing. Anyhow, I just got some references from the screenshots on the show, and here I'm drawing Buff David. Uh, this is where he gets his um, cyber cyber enhancements, if we can say so. Yeah. So I only had this little um, fraction of the frame, and I wanted to draw the entire body. And for that, I I uh, tried to picture the proportions in in scale with what I had in frame. I also took references from other uh, frame shots there. And now I'm starting to sketch the 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 shadow design, what I called. This is important because Trigger does a very simple shadow design, but they cover a lot of the shapes. So here we have the final drawing. And now it's time to apply grease pencil modifiers. Please uh, be aware that the modifiers applied to Grease Pencil are not the same as applied to the 3D objects. So Grease Pencil modifiers are different from the 3D objects. Anyways, let's use an array modifier. Why is this? Because we also need another object that we're going to cover on the following modifier. But for now, let's just add a sphere empty. This sphere empty is very important because it's going to determine how far or how near all of the other uh, after shadow images are going to be so right now I'm going to use that to offset all of the other images okay this is part of the effect and please bear in mind I'm not going to be animating I'm just giving you the building blocks for you to animate and create your own things okay so please do not expect anything more than that anyways you can also have the option to rotate in Y Okay, so it's time for the magic. Let's add the modifier tint for the grease pencil object. You're going to get this whitish thing, but don't worry, you can switch that to gradient. And now we're going to pick the colors that we mentioned before, which are green and a teal or rather blue. So here we go. You can target your object to be the center of the gradient Offset and this is important because you want to have a radius to uh, Disperse or to spread the color. Okay, so you can also do that by switching the Gradient bars here or switching the colors directly. However, you would like And right now we have this grease pencil object which is called shadows, but we need to have the um, uh, the effect only on the on the shadows not on David himself so what we're going to do here is to duplicate the grease pencil object well right now I'm going to be switching these colors some more okay so you can see that okay so here we go I'm going to sh shift D duplicate this and this is going to be called David original if you try to place it above you can't but one thing that you can do is to rename the shadows as such. I'm going to be rotating my viewport so that the, the, the original David shows through. Okay, and the shadows are going to be on the back. So let me just rename this uh, object as shadows. And we basically have the color. Now, a very important thing is the strength for the tint. You can see that as far as I go uh, all the way up or all the way down, the effect gets applied to the shadows, copies, to the copy shadows, to the shadow copies of David. Please remember that this is a modifier specifically applied to the grease pencil object called the shadow, okay? 
so it's got all its original color. If you have this grease pencil animated, they will be also animated as long as you play back your timeline. So that's a nifty effect. So here we go. This is the composition of the effect. It's a pretty quick and dirty um, setup, but it gets the job done for what we need. Right now, the frame is still, but if it, if this was moving and you had to animate this, you can uh, you can create this effect in Grease Pencil using only Array plus Tint, duplicating the original Grease Pencil and then removing the modifiers from the original Grease Pencil. This one is the shadow one and this is the one that has the tint applied. And you can see that the radius for the effect to tint the shadows is editable here in this parameter. Alright, so thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Let me ask you something, have you tried Blender? Try Blender. Blender is powerful and beyond artistry compatible. If you like this content, I would like you to do three things for me. Number one, hit that subscribe button because when you do, you help the channel grow. Also because I demonetize this video specifically so that it can reach you. Second of all, go watch Cyberpunk Edge Runners. This show is a very well-crafted show as in production as it is on animation. Don't ever let anyone tell you, no, you can, you know, become a 3D animator without knowing any 2D animation because as I have presented in my channel all throughout this many years, you do need to be a 2D animator in order to do amazing, great anime stuff as in 3D, as in 3D. So this is the most uh, forefront words we can get from this from trigger ceo himself once you stop working on a skill you often lose it for good and this is why they often concentrate themselves in training artists to become part of the studio if you want to know more details about how studio trigger works please make sure to check the video description urls so quick recap please subscribe go watch the videos thank you very much